Welcome to the introductory occupational safety and fire protection training for new employees at the production sites of Orlen Unipetrol RPA, which is a leading Czech producer of petrochemical and agrochemical products. Today, during our introductory training, you will be told about the basic safety rules at work. You will learn what is and what is not an occupational injury and how such an injury is assessed. You will learn about work accident prevention, about the necessity to use personal protective equipment, how to provide first aid. You will learn how to handle with chemical substances safely. At the end of this training, you will understand internal rules concerning waste management and what to do in case of fire. In the event of a liquid leak, a hazard could originate at the point of leakage. Flammable liquids could cause an immediate fire where ignited by an external stimulus or by self-ignition. An occupational injury is each injury which occurs at work, from the moment when you enter the premises of the factory or when you arrive at the car park until the moment you leave the premises of the factory. However, an occupational injury is not an injury which you suffer from on the way to work or from work. For example, in front of your house when you get on or get off from the public means of transportation. In the event of a gas or vapour leak, a cloud would develop at the point of the leak and subsequently spread further into the premises, or outside and disperse into the atmosphere. However, before it would dissipate, if it were a flammable gas, an explosion could occur at any time during the cloud's progress, in which case there would be a threat to people's lives from a blast wave, a fire at the point of explosion, being hit by flying debris and by toxic smoke from the fire. Any consequences of physical violent behaviour among employees are not considered an occupational injury either. However, the gas could also be toxic, and its progress would then lead to irritation and burning of mucous membranes or poisoning, depending on the concentration of gas in the cloud advancing from the point of leakage. Also, an employee's willful, self-inflicted injury will not be considered as an occupational injury either. If stable detectors or analyzers trigger at the place of work, it is necessary to immediately interrupt work, stop work with sources of ignition, secure the workplace, leave it and inform the operating staff. Another of the basic and important measures is equipping people with escape masks in the standby position. This disposable personal protective work equipment is only used to safely leave the hazardous area and is not intended for carrying out work activities. Where personal detectors or stable detectors indicate danger, everyone must leave the premises of the production unit using the escape mask. In zones with a high risk of hydrogen sulfide occurrence, it is also necessary to ensure quick communication about the occurring danger. This is done by using radio stations, which must always stay on. That means, don't turn it off. Also, don't say, Houston, we have a problem on the radio but what happened and where it happened. For example, I am reporting a hydrogen sulfide spill on site 1322, under column C01. 